Hello friends, today's topic of discussion is monuments in Delhi during the modern period. In the earlier lecture, we talked about certain important monuments of Delhi of the modern period and how these monuments, they are related to the history, culture as well as heritage of the country. And they also convey the importance of not that impo of that monument only, but at the same time they also try to convey the important architectural features. They also uh, they are also situated in the history of that particular period. And later on, how they also promote tourism as well. When we find that so many people they visit these monuments as a tourist site, and they also in a way try to add to the uh, the revenue potential of the government as well so when you talk about all these kinds of ideas they try to also communicate the issues of civilization that how india has been has seen a number of traditions over a period of time from the framework of uh, the civilization and when one is talking about india as a place where so many monuments are there and these monuments, they are trying to con communicate uh, the heritage of the country. In the earlier lecture, we talked about some of the monuments. We talked about the uh, the kind of uh, the places which were built during this time. Mutiny Memorial was one. We talked about the Viceroy's house, which was known as the Rashtrapati Bhavan. That was also being talked about. Apart from that, we also talked about the parliament, that how uh, the seat of democracy in that sense uh, was uh, built during that particular period when Edwin Lutyens and Baker, both of them, they designed places. We also talked about one of uh, the places of religious worship, which was the Lotus Temple and how it, ha it, it is a space which has been visited by so many people. We also talked about India Gate, that how India Gate is a very significant place, not only from the point of view that it is centrally located, but at the same time, how the martyrs uh, for the country, they occupy a special place at that particular place. And uh, now we will talk about certain other places which have been very, very important from uh, the commercial point of view. And they could be seen that how the financial and the business centers uh, and one of them, one of the important places is Connaught Place, which has been abbreviated to CP and how it houses the headquarters of the several noted Indian firms as well. So many of them now they have shifted to the other locations because of the increasing uh, traffic issues in the center of the city. But despite that, uh, we find that some of the important firms, they, they have been located there. And many heritage structures, they could also be seen at that at this place. And uh, how it is the showpiece of Lutyens Delhi, the prominent central business district as well. And how this place was named after the field marshal, first Duke of Connaught and Stratham. And the construction work for this began in 1929, it was completed in 1933. And the inner circle of the Connaught Place was renamed as Rajiv Chowk, while outer circle became the Indra Chowk. So we find that uh, the the places which have been renamed in India, uh, they are numerous, and at different points of time, the places they have been uh, renamed on uh, on the names of the prominent politicians uh, of India and uh, those who have held. A power in their own hands and they have taken such kind of decisions that the places they have been renamed. Then uh, we find that uh, before the work began, uh, the construction began for the Connaught Place area, there was a ridge and it was covered with the Kika trees and it was populated with jackals and the wild pigs. And uh, the residents of the Kashmiri Gate Civil Lines area, they visited during the weekends for hunting. And the Hanuman Temple, it also attracted many visitors uh, from the old walled city who came only on Tuesdays and Saturdays and before sunset. So we find that before the development of this particular area by the British, we find that how it was being covered uh, with the natural vegetation, flora and fauna. And uh, we also see that this place uh, was Georgian architecture was used and it was modeled after the Royal Crescent in Bath. And while the Royal Crescent is semicircular and a three-story residential structure, the Connaught Place had only two floors, which made almost a complete circle intended to house the commercial establishment on ground with the residential space on first floor. 
so we find that these kinds of structures uh, they were very very uh, they, they were they were inspired from different places and how circle was eventually designed with two concentric circles creating an inner circle middle circle and the outer circle with seven roads radiating from a circular central park so we find that this uh, kind of construction of connaught place at that point of time and how uh, how the indian successive indian governments they have also tried to preserve uh, that particular uh, architecture as well and over a period of time we have seen that many offices they have shifted out uh, from a connaught place but at the same time it is also a hub in the sense for various restaurants etc uh, some of the bigger brands uh, for shopping they are available in the connaught place so from that point of view it is a place which is very commercial in nature and at the same time it is also being loved by the people those who visit at different points of time and many a times we hear that the place has become overcrowded apart from that we also have seen that how it is also very relevant from the cultural point of view and regal the first theater in india was opened in 1932 by sir sobha singh and it was designed by the architect walter uh, walter skykes george and mainly hosted the stage performances and later it hosted the western classical music artists russian ballet and british theater groups and soon started morning and afternoon movie shows as well thereafter we find that other theaters they were also opened odeon and rivoli they followed regal so we find that how uh, the the cultural space of uh, the city uh, it became vibrant because of the coming of the various theaters at this place and we also see that uh, it also provided an opportunity to the people those who were from the cultural sphere to in a way participate or uh, participate or contribute in the cultural life of the city as well and uh, as uh, we have seen when these uh, kinds of theaters they were opened apart from the performances we find that films they were also being exhibited in these theaters and even now some of them they they have they, they are there at that place and they have a lot of historic value from that point of view and uh, we see that how wengers which was owned by a swiss couple and introduced delhi to the pastries and the homemade swiss chocolates it was originally established in 1926 as spencers in the kashmiri gate then it was re relocated here and we find uh, that uh, till 1980s a fat fat seva harley davidson rickshaw service took visitors from cp to red fort and chandni chowk before it was stopped uh, due to the pollution concerns as well and when one is also visiting connaught place we find that there is an underground market palika bazaar is stretching up to outer circle and it also came up with an adjoining underground parking lot as well and in 80s and 90s in uh, 90s especially uh, we find that this market was visited by so many people yeah, even now it is crowded at times but uh, we find that because of uh, growing urbanization uh, we find that uh, different kinds of markets they have been opened and different malls etc but at that point of time palika bazaar was uh, the an air conditioned market which was a rarity at that point of time where you will not find any air condition market so we find uh, that the addition of uh, the red sand stone uh, inspired by the historic red fort and the glass sky creeper jeevan bharti building is there uh, which is the lic building which was designed by the architect charles correra and uh, we find that how Ch charles correa uh, he designed this building and this building is one of the important buildings at the at the connaught place and uh, we all have also seen that uh, the various kinds of theaters which were opened uh, in connaught place at that point of time and how these uh, theaters they contributed to the cultural life and plaza which was opened in 1940 designed by sir roger tor russell who was in a way architect of cp itself and this theater was owned by a director and actor sohrab modi until early 1950s then we find odeon was built in 1945 and had city's second mm uh, 70 mm screen after sheela cinema in pahadganj 
and Rivoli, which is close to Regal, was smallest uh, theatre in area. So, uh, we find that how uh, these theatres, all of them, they also have contributed to uh, the cultural heritage of the city in their own manner. Then uh, we also see that how uh, uh, on 7th March 2014, largest known Indian national tricolor was hosted at the center of the Central Park in Connaught Place and the uh, flag is 60 feet in width width in 90 feet in length and is hosted on top of a 2007 feet high must and the flag weighs around 37 kilograms. So, we find that how uh, over a period of time uh, when uh, this flag was hosted at this particular place and it is, it is showing not only respect to the symbol of Indian independence or uh, for that matter one of the symbols of our independence as well, but at the same time uh, these uh, kinds of gestures, these kinds of ideas, they also instill a sense of patriotism uh, among the masses, those who visit uh, such kind of places at, as, as CP is a tourist destination. And when you talk about when uh, about the about the flag, then we find that it is uh, made of knitted polyester fabric called uh, the denier polyester and which is manufactured in Mumbai. And Ashok Chakra on the flag has been painted by using a specialized printing process as well. So, all sorts of care they, they, they have been taken uh, in, in the sense that the best kind of a quality could be provided and how uh, it is also an important landmark in that sense. And after that we have seen that uh, flags they have been installed in different parts of the city uh, by the government. And uh, when you talk about Connaught Place as a place where a lot of shooting also takes place, a number of films they have been shot at uh, Connaught Place and to name a few of them, Hazaro Khwaisha, Si, Pyar Ke Side Effects, Three Idiots, Aisha, Delhi Belly, Rockstar. So, all these films they, they have been shot uh, in, in and around Connaught Place and how the filmmakers they have also been enamored by uh, the kind of architecture which is available at Connaught Place because of which uh, we find they have shot uh, these films and apart from that apart from the films which have been mentioned already we also find some of the other blockbusters which have been shot in Connaught Place Agent Vinod in 2012, Wiki Donor in 2012 then Hit Story in 2011, Special 26 in 2013, PK in 2014. So, these are some of the films. Apart from them also we find that there have been numerous films which we will not be able to enumerate, but uh, these are some of the important ones uh, which have been shot uh, at uh, Connaught Place. Uh, we also see that apart from Connaught Place which is a commercial center and at the same time uh, a place where a lot of business is happening. We find that Agrasen Ki Baoli uh, is designated as a protected monument by the Archaeological Survey of India under the ancient monuments and archaeological sites and remains act of 1958. And uh, we also find that it, uh, it has a 60 meter long and 15 meter wide historical step well on the Haley Road. So, Agrasen Ki Baoli is a place which is some kind of a step well uh, which, is, which, is, which is seen uh, near the Connaught Place and it is being argued that it was built by legendary King Agrasen during the Mahabharat era and again it was rebuilt in 14th century by Agrawal community which traces its origin to Maharaja Agrasen. And uh, it is also being stated that uh, regarding the name uh, Agrasen Ki Baoli, it should be stated that in 1132 AD, an Agrawal poet named uh, Vibhud Sridhar mentions in his work that how this particular uh, place was built. And we also have seen when one visits uh, this particular place, many a times it has also been argued that it is also a haunted place and how the visible parts of this historical step well consist of three levels and how each level is lined with arched niches on both sides. And so, from the architectural point of view, from that perspective, this step well was probably rebuilt during the Tughlaq period and many of the stairs, parts, they are also immersed in water as well. And uh, when you talk about other kinds of 
bowlies or kinds of tanks or reservoirs which are there. The oldest existing bowli in Delhi, Anangtal bowli, is located in Mehrauli, which was also known as uh, Yogini Pura, and it was built in the 10th century by Rajput king Anangpal two of the Tomar dynasty and Anangpal literally means reservoir, reservoir provided by Anangpal of the house of Tomar. So uh, we find that this traditions of uh, Baulis, this uh, tradition uh, is a continuous kind of a tradition and the number of rulers at different points of time, they have paid attention in that sense where uh, water is an important resource or source. Uh, for the people of the city and how it can be preserved so that it can be provided uh, to the people again. Then we also see National Museum which was there, it had a variety of articles uh, ranging from prehistoric era to the modern works of art and it was established in 1949 and it is under the Ministry of Culture, Government of India. And the blueprint of the National Museum had been prepared by the Gwair Committee set up by the Government of India in 1946. And we find that how the National Museum Institute of the Arts, History of Arts, Conservation and Museology on the first floor is also there, which was established in 1983 and which is now is a deemed university since 1989 and runs the masters and doctoral level uh, uh, courses in the history of art, conservation and museology. And uh, we find that uh, when you talk about the present museum building, uh, in 19, it was in a way started, uh, it was, the foundation was laid in 1955 and formally it was open to public in 1960. And museum has a number of possessions, uh, various works of arts which are available and both the Indian as well as foreign origin art uh, works or the artifacts are available in India and how they are covering more than 5000 years of the rich cultural heritage of the different parts of the world. So, National Museum has a number of artifacts and these artifacts have a lot of significance in that sense and we find that when one visits uh, the National Museum, then we find from the archaeological point of view sculptures in the stone, bronze and terracotta various arms, armor, decorative arts, jewelry, manuscripts, all of them they are available in the National Museum. You know, how these uh, kinds of things, all of them they contribute to the history uh, of uh, India and how they have a lot of significance as well. We also see uh, a number of coins and we also find epigraphs, we find the textiles, Tanjore paintings, Anthropology, Central Asian Antiquities, all of them, they, they are also available uh, in the National Museum and there are various kinds of galleries which are catering to it, whether the Harappa Gallery, Maurishung and Satwahan Art Galleries, then Kushana Gallery, Gupta Gallery, Medieval Art Gallery. So all these kinds of galleries, early medieval artifacts and late medieval artifacts, all these kinds of galleries, they are trying to convey the importance of that particular period, they are presenting uh, the various kinds of artifacts which are available to us of that particular period. So, uh, this uh, kind of uh, a situation where we find the various kinds of galleries like the decorative arts gallery, it refers to the arts concerned with the design and decoration of objects that are prized for their utility rather than for their purely aesthetic qualities. In that context, we find the ceramics, pottery, furniture, textiles, glassware, metalware and jewellery. So, all this is available and uh, when you visit these galleries, we find that all these kinds of galleries, they try to convey the importance of that particular period and the kind of artifacts which are available of that particular period, they are being exhibited in these galleries and we are able to know about the Indian culture, we are, we are able to understand the history of that particular period uh, by visiting these galleries which are available and they are, they are also uh, uh, in a way categorized in the framework of different regions or the different source material uh, of, which, uh, the, of, of, of which the objects are. So, whether they are in the framework of the Rajasthan or Pahadi miniature kind of paintings etc., all that is there or you have the bronze or coins gallery, British Indian coins. So, all these things they have been categorized in a particular manner and they have been exhibited and these galleries they try to convey the rich culture, cultural traditions of India and we also have seen uh, that they also 
try to convey the day to day art forms of that particular period. Then we also find the Sharan Rani uh, Baklewal musical instruments gallery collection is divided into three parts such as the wind instruments, string instruments and percussion instruments and we also find the wood carving gallery etc as well. Then thereafter when we talked about the religious spaces, spaces and apart from the lotus temple we also have Aksharadham is a Swaminarayan temple complex and Aksharadham Swaminarayan uh, complex that kind of a complex displays the millennia of traditional Hindu and Indian culture, spirituality as well as the architecture. And this was opened in 2005 and temple is at the center of the complex and this was built according to the Vastu Shastra and uh, Pancharatra Shastra as well. So we find that uh, it is a very important tourist place from that point of view that so many visitors they are uh, visiting the Swaminarayan temple and uh, we also find that the central temple was crafted entirely of the stone and we find the complex has exhibitions on the incidents from the life of Swami Narayan history of India as well. And IMAX image maximum features on the early life of Swami Narayan as teenage yogi, Nilkant, a musical fountain on message of Upanishads and large landscapes, gardens, they are also part of the complex and the temple is named after the belief in the Swami Narayan Hinduism. So we find that this particular temple has also been an important place uh, where we find that so many tourists they are visiting. So from the modern point of view it has a lot of uh, relevance and we find that uh, a number of uh, source, uh, number of material or different materials they were being taken from different areas whether from the Rajasthani pink sandstone or the Italian Canada marble. And we also find that a number of carved pillars etc they have also been found at this place. We also have seen in recent times that how the statue of Subhash Chandra Bose, uh, Netaji statue, it was in a way, it is a mon monolithic statue which is made of the black granite which was dedicated to Netaji Subhash Bose's contribution to the Indian freedom struggle and who also served as the commander in chief of the Indian National Army INA. And a statue was installed in India Gate and we find that when it was being installed uh, there uh, and this uh, this uh, uh, this statue uh, is placed under the canopy behind the India Gate in Delhi. And uh, we have also seen that not only uh, this uh, particular statue which is 28 feet in total height including uh, 8 feet in total width it is there but at the same time the symbolic importance of uh, this statue is also very relevant from the point of view of India's independence because the kind of role uh, which was played by Netaji Subhash in uh, the framework of the Indian National Army or in terms of Indian independence is has been recognized at different levels and uh, we have seen that his uh, contribution in a way could be better recognized when uh, we, we can have some kind of a memorial which is directly dedicated to him at a prominent place where so many people are visiting. So uh, we find that the contribution of the various uh, leaders those who have been associated with the national movement has to be recognized and various kinds of uh, monuments uh, if they are dedicated to them they, they can be built. So people they will be aware uh, about their contribution as well. So it is not only uh, concerned with the idea of uh, the architecture, it is not only concerned with the uh, idea of culture but it is also concerned with the idea of history where we see that the history of the Indian national movement could be better uh, represented or which could be better told uh, to the people through such kind of contributions or such kind of dedication uh, which has been done in this particular case. We also have seen in recent times that how the central vista redevelopment project which refers to the ongoing redevelopment to revamp the central vista India central administrative area located near the Raisana hills including revamping the Kartavipath construction of a new residence for the vice president of India, a new office and residence for the prime minister of India combining all the ministerial buildings in a single central secretariat. So all these kinds of things they have to be done 
and how uh, it is uh, the, the kind of redevelopment project which is being undertaken and uh, the part uh, new parliament building is also part of this which was being constructed and which was recently inaugurated in May 2023. And uh, we find that how these kinds of monuments which have been built over a period of time and the kind of continuous traditions where successive governments they are also contributing in that sense could also be seen. And when one is trying to understand these monuments, uh, we realize that they have a lot of importance and significance in terms of conveying uh, the kind of contribution of the people, those who have been associated with these monuments. And at the same time, many a times these kinds of monuments, as we talked about the statue of Netaji Subhash, uh, where we find that uh, such kind of a luminary who was associated with the national movement uh, in that particular context and framework, they also add a value not only uh, to that particular place, but also are able to display the contribution of these people uh, in, in the present or contemporary times as well. And uh, when uh, one is talking about these monuments, we see them in the framework of the heritage of India and the various monuments which we have discussed uh, in that particular framework, they are also related to the heritage of the country as well. And when one is trying to understand the history and the heritage, how it is linked to the issue of culture, that we also have to see. And when one is talking about culture, we find that how uh, India has a rich cultural heritage and over a period of time, culture and civilization, both of them, they have played an important role in terms of another thing, the important aspects of the Indian civilization. So from that point of view, uh, we find that all these kinds of monuments, they definitely play an important role. Uh, they, they try to convey the importance of our past to the succeeding generations. And the succeeding generations, they also take pride in that sense when they uh, go to these kinds of monuments. And uh, they, when they are attaching pride to these monuments, then we also can assume that they will definitely play an important role uh, in building such monuments in future as well so that uh, so that when these kinds of mon uh, monuments they are built in the present times the succeeding generations they can also take pride in future when uh, when they visit such kind of monuments so an important concern in the development or in the construction of these monuments which are related to the modern period is that they are trying to convey the heritage of our past, they are trying to relate them in the framework of history and their own particular significance and importance is definitely there. So with this I would like to end the discussion. Thank you very much.